Hi everyone, it's Justine here from House of Mahalo. Thanks so much for joining me. So I'm just popping on to do um, a little make with you today. Um, a company who sells their paper pads on Amazon and AliExpress uh, kindly sent me this uh, paper pad. Um, it's a six by six. And I thought the colours would be really, really nice for, um, you know, like fairy magical type things. So um, I'm not going to flick through all of them. You get two designs of each and they're sort of this really nice, like almost like marble effect. And I thought we would make some projects with these. Um, as you can see, I've got my little prototype here. Lots of different colours. And yeah, I just thought these would be really, really nice for fairy and magic and... Um, cosmos and that sort of stuff that I'm going to be getting into at some point. So this is what we're going to be making and this was inspired by a video I saw from Lyric Lover Crafts. As always I will link it down below. Um, mine is slightly different from hers but you know um, the idea is I suppose very similar. So it's basically a little notebook that we're going to make with the 6x6s. So you use, uh, for this project, You'll need two 6x6s for the cover, so uh, this one, this is my front with the green and then this is the other one with the blue. Um, and then if you've got single sided paper like this is, um, as you can see it's just white on the back, then you'll need a third sheet um, if you want to, to cover that up, or you could use book page. And basically we have a little pocket in the front, very simple journal in the middle with a three hole pamphlet stitch, and we have a bonus belly band in the back. Um, and that's basically what it is. And I really liked this. Um, this is just some note paper that I've been using. And I really like that you can still see the edge of the, the notebook. Um, and yeah, just tied with some, some ribbon. So a really simple project. A great way to use up your 6 by 6s And I think they look really, really pretty. Um, so I thought I would just make a couple of these with you today. So for the first one... I want to use this green and grey. Now this this is sort of more like a thick paper thickness, can you hear? Not a cardstock, I wouldn't say. Um, what is the... It's 160 GSM, but it feels more just like a, a quite a strong paper. But it's ideal for little notebooks like this. Equally, if you've got more of a cardstock feel, then um, you could use that. You might just want to use something else in the middle rather than another sheet of the, the paper, like book page or something. Okay, all right, so what are we going to do? Now I have misplaced my um, scoring tool. <laughs> Great, I know. Um, so I'm going to, I've just made a mark. Basically you want to fold one of the sheets at four inches, oh two inches, sorry. If you score at, at two inches, it will give you four inches across. Obviously mine is more of a, not an exact science today because I don't know where that tool has gone. So that's what we're going to have. This is your back cover and this fold over piece. And I'm going to cut some of this off in a minute. And then you get your other piece. So I'm thinking I want to have the green. And we're just going to slide that in. And you're not, you're going to go... Where your crease is, where your fold is, you're going to go slightly in from that, like a sixteenth of an inch, just to give you a little bit of space. Okay, so we are going to, um, actually before I do that, I've forgotten how to make it already. <laughs> um, what I want to do is I'm going to cut this one down to five inches and that leftover piece is going to be our belly band. If we cut that at five, that's our cute little belly band. And so what you get is you should have an inch fold over. I mean, you can do really any measurement you like, but that's the one that I'm, I'm going with. And then we're going to put some glue on that flap. Um, hopefully you can see what I'm doing okay. Um, the lighting is not great today because it's very, very wet, miserable, overcast, etc. Let me just chuck you in. So again, slide your paper in. Not butt up to the crease, but just slightly over from, from it. Just a, a little piece. And then just fold over your, your flap. Oops. 
filled up my bottle of glue yesterday so I have to be very careful not to have everything spurting out on me today. <laughs> oh, the usual story. It's not coming out at all and then it's coming out too much, isn't it? Okay, and then obviously we need to make this piece the same uh, size as this. So for that I'm just going to fold it over like so. And then if we want, that can be our um, pocket, if you want it to be. You could cut it off and re-glue it. Um, so for example, me, I've got a little bit of an overlap. I'm not worried about that for this because these are just little notebooks to go in journals. But if you want to be a little bit more precise about it, then you might prefer uh, to be a bit more precise. Okay, and then I'm just going to add some glue at the top and bottom. and fold that over. If you're using a thicker cardstock you'll probably want to um, burnish your folds a little bit more than what I'm doing because this is a thinner a thinner paper, a thick paper, thinner cardstock. Um, I probably still will do it but it's not it's not overly necessary for this. And that is essentially your your notebook. Because it's single sided I also want to have this, I'm going to use another 6x6 six six, which I realise I probably should have done before putting that pocket down but that's okay. I might just lift up this bit and just slide that in. And then I'm just trying to decide how I want it to be. I think I'll go this way so that we've got um, this nice grey. Here we are. And for that I'm going to use my Kalal just because it's... Um, it gets good coverage. It gives me a little bit of sliding room. And I'm just going to put this on. Sorry if I'm a little bit rusty today. I haven't actually filmed a tutorial for about three weeks. <laughs> oh, so the pressure is on today. Um, yeah, because I've been really, really busy with work, so I've not been in here. So I'm a little bit rusty, I think. So please forgive me. Obviously, if you want a more slicker tutorial, then definitely check out the video I've linked down below for it. This is just me sharing the idea and giving it a go and all that. So I'm not going to press down too much because I don't want the glue to spurt out everywhere, but I'm just going to do that. Just make sure all the edges are down. Now I am probably going to stitch around mine just because I really like the look. Not necessary. Glue is just fine. But And then I'm just going to close up that side. Top and bottom. Just to finish off my pocket. Obviously if you've got um, you know, double sided paper you wouldn't have to do that step. And then I'm just going to fold my paper back into the, the shape that it is. Now because I've done a double layer of paper at this point, I will um, uh, bone folder it down and also make sure I'm not spitting out glue everywhere. So let me just do that. Now you don't have to stitch around them, as I say, I just like the, the look of them stitched. Alright, and that is essentially your little piece. And then of course we've got our, our belly band. So I'm going to pop that in as well. I'm not inking anything today because I just feel like, um, I don't think this paper necessarily needs it. But ink away if you like. Oops. And then that's the little belly band in. And because we're using the 6 by 6s you know, aside from cutting off the belly band, everything is the same size. Um, not a huge amount of measuring needed. Obviously, in my case, you've got this, but actually I quite like that. 
that you can see the green and grey together on that side as well. It's quite nice. And that is the bare bones of the little notebook. Obviously from here we can put the papers in and um, we've also got the, the lace here just to cover up that join if you want to. So I'm going to do another one just to make sure it's really clear what on earth it was that I was doing. Okay, so we've got the one that's going to fold over. So again, because I've lost my scoring tool, I'm just going to use a mark. So that is folding at two inches to give you four inches across, thereabouts. And we're going to cut at five inches, thereabouts, to get your belly band. That's that one. And I thought I would use this jazzy paper to go with this one. Just trying to decide which part of it I want to see. Yeah. Yeah, we'll go that way. So let's uh, try not to put as much glue on this time. Talking to myself. <laughs> okay, so put your glue along your flap. Slide the other paper in. Not but up to the the crease, but you know, close-ish, sixteenth of an inch thereabouts. It just gives you a little bit of room for that, um, you know, so things aren't like folding and buckling and all the rest of it. Okay, and then again, I just want to fold this. Again, this will be folding it to give you a two inch pocket. I folded that one a bit better that time. <laughs> to give you that. And then this time before we glue the pocket, we're going to put the other piece of paper down, which I think I want to go that way. And again, we're going to use just the colour. Again, try not to spread it out. As I say, I'm going to stitch around these in a minute, so um, I'm not using like tons and tons of glue, or I shouldn't be anyway. Uh, if you are not going to be doing stitching, because it is not necessary at all, then, um, you know, don't feel like you have to, you know, use a, a better glue or use more of it and all the rest of it. Yeah, that's it. So yeah, three six by sixes if you've got um, single-sided paper. If it's um, double-sided, then you'll only need you'll only need two. Okay, just making sure that's in there nice. Just give that a bone folder down. I do this when the glue is wet because it has a chance for the paper to still move around a bit um, just to, to give you, it, it just gives you the space that you need for, for, for everything. I, I find that if you wait until the glue is dry, um, you know, you kind of find that um, maybe it's too stiff to fold it. Like that's just what I've seen in my experience, but maybe that's just me. <laughs> Okay, and glue your top and top and bottom of your pocket like so. This is going to look really nice for fairies, I think this one. And then we can put our belly band in. Now this one is in the same paper, so it kind of um, hides it a little bit. I really like how that looks, so that's why I've done that. Yeah, I can just imagine fairies amongst this marbling paper. Oops, make sure it's straight to the That's it. So as you can see, what I've done with the belly band is I've just turned it upside down. So the, the darkness is at the top dark dark light light just because I felt like that looked looked really nice okay so from here we're going to put our lace on and um, I'm doing it at this point because I I want to be able to stitch 
through the, the crochet or the lace um, just so that it's held on a bit better. Um, you don't have to do that, again glue is just fine. So uh, with this one I'm going to put the, the lace on, so let me grab that. I think I'm going to use this, uh, this nice crochet, I thought that looked quite cool going down there, so I'm going to use that on both of them. And I'm using the beacon, it's like Fabri-Tac. I'm trying very hard to not use too much because it can give you a shiny look through. And obviously where I'm adding that bit of stitching, this should be just fine. Basically we just want to cover up disguise where the the joins of the two papers are. So it basically it looks like they're the same paper. Um, or if you check out the video that I've linked from Lyric Lover Crafts, um, you'll see that she uses papers that um, are like completely different um, so that they actually do look, um, you know, it looks like two different pieces, but she, they look really nice when she did them. So definitely recommend having a look at her video. Just trying to decide. Yeah, I, think I want it over a bit. So again, I'm just trying very hard not to use too much glue. I just fancied a few simple projects uh, for a little bit just to get me back into crafting where I haven't been in here for <laughs> oh, three weeks. I know I keep going on about it, but honestly, for me, that is just not not normal for the past two years. Like, you know, God, I've just been so busy. <laughs> OK, so I'm just going to cut those down. And then I'm going to run this through my sewing machine or these through my sewing machine um, I'm going to do a zigzag stitch just all the way around the cover and that is going to uh, catch the crochet and it's going to catch the belly band and part of the pocket <laughs> um, but you know it, it works fine for me um, do not feel like you need to stitch um, I just really really like the, the look of it um, what we can also do is round the corners, uh, if you like that look. Um, I think it finishes them off quite nicely, so I'm just going to round all those. My rounder is not the best, so I have to double do it in order to get the <laughs> get the shape I want. So just excuse me for a minute, talk amongst yourselves. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed making these. Um, just a nice little simple project just to, yeah. Um, I just think they'll make really good additions to journals. You know, they're not, they're not too thick, especially with this, um, this thinner cardstock. Um, and there's loads of writing space inside, really. I mean, considering they're just going to be small notebooks. OK, so as I say, I'm going to pop it through and I'm just going to do a zigzag all the way around really simply. I might also do a little bit of inking just around the, the edges. Um, and then we'll come back and we'll do a three hole pamphlet stitch. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I've got all the stitching done all around the outside. So now it's just a case of popping in our papers. Yeah, I'm really liking how that's looking. Um, so I've, sh I've shared this a few times. When I stitch through paper, um, I always bone fold at the back of the stitching and go over it with um, Distress Ink, just um, so that it looks a little bit neater on the back. Um, I get comments every time I, I mention about that, so I thought I would say something because I know a few of you have found that helpful to know. Okay, so I'm going to add some labels to the front. I believe these are an Artie Mays freebie, I think. Um, I just felt like that would finish off the cover nicely and 
you know, wherever these go, they can have like notes or ideas or field guide or something written on them. So I'm just going to do that. And then we're going to bind the, the pages in um, just with a three hole pamphlet stitch. If you are good with the sewing machine, you could potentially stitch your papers um, into the cover at the sewing machine. Um, now I'm not, I don't trust myself doing that, so I'm not going to, but just in case, um, you're better with the sewing machine. All right, so um, I've got 10 sheets for each one. Now, these are just, um, they're actually from an old notebook that I don't use anymore. Um, so I want to get these used up. So I've just simply cut them down to size. So as I say, or is it eight sheets? I think it might be eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, it is 10. So yeah, 10 sheets, that gives you 40 sides. Now I'm okay with the fact that the um, the papers don't go all the way to the edge um, because I really like that you can still see um, the pretty paper uh, on either side of that. Now I'm okay with that, but if you want, if you're a bit more of a, a perfectionist, then you might not like that as much. So, oops, losing my signature. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do a three-hole pamphlet stitch. Now, because these are just little notebooks, I'll show you what I like to do. Um, when we bind our journals, we often are left with little offcuts like this, where maybe we did, um, you know, a little bit extra for each, um, uh, you know, for the project that we're working on. So you might find that you've got sort of long strips like this. I don't know, really short, basically. And I like to keep those, um, assuming they're not, you know, extra, extra short. Because for stuff like this, they're really, really helpful to, to use. So fingers crossed these will be long enough. Just to do a very simple uh, pamphlet stitch. So, if you know how to do a pamphlet stitch, feel free to look away now. <laughs> but obviously, um, for anyone watching this who wants to see the whole thing come together, then I'm going to do this on video. <laughs> So just get your papers in. Now I always eyeball mine, especially for little things like this. Um, so we're just going to go right the way through the cover. And you'll notice I'm when I put the, the all through, I, I essentially close the, the notebook. The reason I'm doing that is so that the all will go through the papers and through my cover but in the spine and it doesn't come out at like a funny angle or something, which can sometimes happen. Don't worry if it does though, it's not the end of the world, is it? It's just a little notebook. So we're gonna go out through the middle, in through either the top or bottom. Sorry if I'm pulling it to me, it's just because I can't can't see very well. Come on. Don't think I made the hole big enough, so just give it a little bit of a there we go, there we go. And down to the top or bottom, whichever side you haven't done yet. Now because this is a short piece, you just have to be careful not to lose your your thread. And I'm just going to Give that a tug and then I'm going to go through the middle. Now, if you are a beginner, little notebooks like this are also a really, really great way for you to get more comfortable with the uh, binding process. So if you've been sort of struggling a little bit with it, I mean, we all struggle, let's be honest. Um, even those of us who have bound like <laughs> 30 journals by now, Still can be a little bit tricky. Um, yeah, if you're if you're not comfortable with it, then you might find that little notebooks like this are just a great way for you to to try it out as well. Um, okay, and then what we want to do is make sure that we've got one thread on each side of this middle string, and then we're just going to give that a little bit of a tug. Just 
not so much that you rip the papers happens to the best of us but enough that it's nice and tight so that should be fine and then we're just going to knot that off and I'm going to do another knot so I do you know left over right right over left type thing and then because we've not got very much left I'm just going to cut that short and then these little bits can finally go in the bin and then just give that a little bit of a I normally do this where I'll just go through each page just to make sure everything is, is settled fine um, but yeah a great way to use up those little off cuts of your, your binding threads as well um, so keep them, <laughs> don't throw them away unless they're like piddly short I mean obviously if it's like that then definitely throw that you don't need it unless you're going to use it for a tag topper or something but um, for the for the slightly longer pieces where it's not it's not enough to do a full size journal, but for little notebooks like this, mini journals, they are, you know, they they do come in handy. So just give that a work through. I don't know if everyone does this, but I do. I just like my papers sitting sitting nice. And then we just need to add our little poja. How cute is that? So um, I am going to do the other one. <laughs> um, but feel free to, to look away now um, or fast forward me if you don't want to see the process again. Um, all I'm going to do is just wrap some ribbon around them. So essentially that is the project. Um, if anyone is interested in where I got these papers, um, I have got links in the description box. Um, obviously they were kindly sent to me. Uh, for me to test them out um, but they're available on amazon.com and aliexpress so you should find um, that there are some links in the description box for where to find them personally I just really enjoy really enjoyed the marbling um, the marbling effect on them and this green one I'm probably going to use in um, a botanical journal and the purple one I'm thinking will be perfect for a project I've got coming up which is um, another purple journal but maybe with some fairies added might be nice and as I say they come out being thin enough to go in pockets of journals sorry that was just the the doorbell going so I just thought I would just get on and, and do this one whilst I had you on on pause because <laughs> my dog dog goes a little bit um, crazy at the, the door so just finish this one and then it will be a case of just adding our yeah adding the closure so I hope you've enjoyed seeing those come together I've enjoyed working on them I always enjoy doing little notebooks um, so I do find them helpful and I like using up those last binding threads and you know all the rest of it um and that you know i find them helpful for journals but um more than anything it's just a nice little project you can do and especially to get you used to the the binding process just to get a bit more comfortable with it and uh yeah you'll hopefully see that it's not it's not a stressful process once you've had a bit of practice with it um you know it's absolutely fine especially for little things like this so I'm going to put some closures on and then um, you'll see the, the final article, so to speak, in the thumbnail of the video because, yeah, I'm just going to do the same as this, just um, uh, find some more of that, that ribbon um, I think would look really nice. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you like these little, little mini journals. As I say, we've got the... Um, so we used two six by sixes for the cover. We've got a little pocket in here for something, 40 sides, a little belly band, and yeah, obviously that one. I mean, silly me, but um, yeah, I don't mind it so much. This one, obviously, and without my scoring tool, so I really need to go and find it. But um, I'm sure you'll do a better job than me. Um, so yeah, I hope you've enjoyed seeing those come together. And um, as I say, I was inspired by Lyric Lover Crafts for this project. Um, mine is slightly different from hers, um, but I will link her video down below so you can have a look at her, her examples and her tutorial. And I'm knocking things flying. 
Um, but yeah, anyway, thank you so much for joining me. I um, hope you've enjoyed those. Hope you like them and we'll speak soon. Bye-bye for now.